High BMI increases the risk of cancer. Obesity is most often associated with cardiovascular diseases and type 2 diabetes. But it can also lead to cancer. Not only that. It turns out that excessive body weight is the second risk factor for the development of cancer after smoking. It seems that curing obesity reduces the risk of oncological disease. In 2002, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, recognized that overweight and obesity are associated with an increased risk of colon cancer, esophageal adenocarcinoma, postmenopausal breast cancer, endometrial cancer and kidney cancer. In 2007, Pancreatic cancer was added to this list and it was found that obesity most likely increases the risk of developing bladder cancer. A retrospective study has been published in JAMA Network Open that examined whether obesity in early adulthood and middle age affects the risk of gastrointestinal cancers. For this purpose, the data of over 135,000 people aged 55 to 74, collected for the PLCO cancer screening trial, was analyzed. Being overweight, BMI 25 to 30, in early adulthood. Middle age and old age has been shown to increase the risk of colorectal cancer by an average of 20%. Obesity. BMI over 30. In early adulthood increases the risk by 30%. In middle age, by 55%. And in older age, by 39%. Similar results were obtained for other gastrointestinal cancers. This study once again confirms the adverse effect of obesity on the incidence of gastrointestinal cancers. The World Cancer Research Fund and the International Agency for Research on Cancer have estimated that around 20% of cancer cases can be attributed to excessive weight gain. Gastrointestinal cancers are strongly associated with obesity possibly due to persistent, chronic inflammation generated by obesity. The mechanisms of this process are very complex. On the website of the National Cancer Registry, specialists explain that, fat tissue not only stores excess energy, but also produces various types of substances. One of them is estrogen. High levels of this hormone increase the risk of breast, endometrial and several other cancers. Second, obese people have higher amounts of insulin and insulin-like growth factor, IGF, in their blood than lean people. This condition promotes the development of certain tumors, such as liver cancer and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in men, and colon and bladder cancer in women. What's more, fat cells, apart from estrogen, also produce adipokines, i.e. hormones that regulate inflammatory and metabolic processes as well as cell growth. Adipokines make obesity essentially a chronic, mild inflammatory condition. Inflammatory processes increase the risk of developing cancer, especially liver cancer, up to 4.5 times. Other possible mechanisms contributing to the risk of cancer include altered immune responses and oxidative stress. The best way to prevent cancer related to excess body weight is to lose weight. 
but few people with obesity manage to do it successfully on their own. Maintaining a slimmer figure for a long time turns out to be too difficult for over 90%. People. They usually return to baseline within a year. And the yo-yo effect itself can also stimulate the development of cancer. For example, one study conducted for AICR, Association for International Cancer Research, found that frequent fluctuations in body weight increase the risk of developing kidney cancer. Since so few people manage to lose weight effectively, it is difficult to scientifically confirm to what extent reducing body weight protects against cancer. The strongest evidence comes from studies of patients who underwent surgery to treat obesity. They have a significantly lower risk of developing cancer than people who have not undergone bariatric surgery. Usually, less invasive methods, diet and lifestyle changes, manage to lose at most 10%. Weight. While resection of the intestine and stomach allows you to lose up to 30%. It is worth remembering that even a slight loss of weight lowers the level of hormones that stimulate the development of cancer. However, if you are struggling with obesity, you should go to a team of specialists who will be able to treat obesity comprehensively. In this disease, surgery is often useful but also help from an internist, diabetologist, cardiologist, psychologist, physiotherapist, and dietitian. The smallest engine in the world 10 billion times smaller than a car engine. An international team of physicists has created the world's smallest engine. It is the size of a single calcium ion, making it about 10 billion times smaller than a car engine. The experimental engine was developed by an international team of scientists led by Professor Ferdinand schmidt kaler and Ulrich Poschinger from Johannes Gutenberg University Mainz, Germany. The moving parts of the engine i.e. the calcium ion, is its spin, the angular momentum of the particle. There is actually a heat engine that uses spin. In the future, such devices could power various nanotechnologies. They could use the heat that is usually lost. An article by scientists explaining how the engine works was published in the journal Physical Review Letters. In the world's smallest motor, Spin is used to capture and convert the heat absorbed from the laser beam into the vibration of a trapped ion. These vibrations act as a flywheel, and their energy is accumulated and takes on specific values, units called quanta, as predicted by quantum mechanics. The flywheel allows us to actually measure engine power output at the atomic scale and measure single energy quanta for the first time said Mark Mitchison of the Cassis Group at Trinity College, Dublin and co-author of the study. When the motor is at rest, it is in the so-called ground state. In quantum mechanics, there is a state of a system characterized by the lowest possible energy. When a laser beam is directed at the motor, its energy increases. Researchers likened it to a flywheel spinning faster and faster. Importantly, the researchers demonstrated this experimentally, allowing physicists to accurately assess the process. This experiment and the theory behind it marks the beginning of a new era of quantum mechanics-based energy research, said John Gould of Trinity College Dublin. Nanoscale thermal management is one of the fundamental bottlenecks holding back the construction of more efficient computers. 
Understanding how thermodynamics can be applied to such microscopic systems is of great importance for future technologies, he added.